Welcome back to another episode of the Dodgeball Dudes. In today's video, we're going to be talking about call making. Specifically, we're going to be talking to Phil Train here, who has been making calls for six years now on a variety of different teams from all levels of Dodgeball. We're going to ask him some questions and get his expertise on uh, call making. Phil had a semi-finals game and we basically put a microphone onto Phil so we can see what he's making, his decision making during the games. This happened only on Monday. I don't even remember what happened, but we won 7-5. It was a very tight game. It was against OnlyFans. So this is minis versus OnlyFans fans but half of minis is on the only fans team so this is uh quite the the semi-finals wings talk nice good work tristan balling balling left up rush so i chose this clip because you're off court but you're also making calls yeah so as a call maker when you are off court like what should you do like do you have a chain of command so someone else calls or like do you just take the lead and make calls anyway what i'm doing here is i'm not actually making any calls I'm actually just transferring the calls along right. or reminding the teammates to do stuff, right? So before when it was just two balls left, wings talk. So that's pretty obvious. If they haven't talked already, then it's just a quick reminder for them to quickly look at each other to know what's going on. And as opposed to this one, what was that? Left double rush. So I believe Kent made that call, but maybe some people can't hear it. So, you know, just quickly say it in the back as well. But mm. yeah, this is a, just a good way to show your support off court, basically. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And I'm also shagging as well sometimes when you're off court it's best to not talk and let the players on court do their thing right but i know there are some teams where the call makers off and they can still do calls and stuff and as a minis team we've have talked about it before as a mixed debate on what's good and what's not depends on the team right because some people if you're a player on the court being shattered all these random calls exactly. into your ear, it gets really distracting yeah I'm assuming. so you need to actually talk to your team about how they want to be communicated whilst they're on court. Yes. You know, some people might not like being shouted at or some people like being talked to softly at and depending on the time as well. You have to say it when the moment's a bit quieter, I suppose. If they're more adrenaline rushing and, you know, shit's happening, then they're in the zone, then they're not going to hear anything. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you need to definitely have good communication with your teammates on what type of communication they prefer. On court and off court, really. Off court to be a better team and on court to be able to like win the set, I suppose, to be able to keep composure and like finish the set, which is something you have to figure out with your own teammates. So. What are some ways to make calls on court, whether it's hand gestures or voices, or I know when a team is starting, maybe they're a bit confused on like, how do I start making calls? The how is the, the, the question. How right? to make calls, yeah. So, well, yeah. should we say how what we did initially then? Yeah, I mean like what we did initially was initially, numbers and yeah, like it, fill on two, right? Yeah, initially it would be like, you'd call a name and then behind the ball, you put like a sign, which is who you're going to target on, on the position of the court. And that's for just a single ball throws, right? Mm -hmm. Or we can say wings on or left double. So um, hand gestures is hand one. Hand gestures is a massive one. And I think a lot of the one that everyone uses is this one for hold. So you put yeah. your hand up behind the ball. This is for hold. But it is something you have to consider if you do hand gestures, people on the other court may see at a specific angle. Mm. So you have to cover it up. Same goes with if you were to speak behind the ball, passing along the call, you need to cover your mouth because people can read lips. And also the volume when yeah. you do the call, right? You don't want it to be too loud. And that's something you have to consider <coughs> in terms of your environment. There's also some teams that make calls, but their call names are very, they've identified a call with a code word. Or something else, And like yeah. no one knows what it yeah. is. So they can scream it out, yes. but no one will know what Which it is. Which is true. We used to have a team that used to go like, far or hotel. <laughs> <laughs> or like a weird numbering system, right? It's like 52, 64. And then people know exactly yeah. what to do. And I think that's where the creativity comes in making the calls. You can like literally design whatever you want exactly name it however you want yeah. do whatever you want and as long as it's you know it covert yeah exactly disguise yeah you can do whatever you want i think majority of the people would when they make the calls is as your team we i've done this with many of my teams is we sit down and we walk through every single call in our playbook yeah so everyone is on the same page if you recruit one new person in they have to study the playbook as a group as well it's not like you go and you learn our playbook no you come together you can ask us as many questions as you want but you want everyone to be on the exact same page mm -hmm. as the playbook. Because if one person doesn't know the play, then might as well just scrap that play, I suppose. Or yeah. maybe not give them the ball. but Because it's, it's going to affect the whole play exactly. when, when you play dodgeball. Yeah. So make sure everyone knows the call and then make sure you execute it properly. And the execution is a whole nother thing, isn't it? Left split. How does it feel to hear yourself on court? Off court? 
it feels weird but uh yeah it's kind of nice because you don't get to hear that the quality's so nice too usually you just see it but now you hear it yeah. as well so now you get the extra information before the call's done right so you hear the, <laughs> the left split and then you can actually see what we do yeah um i don't know if it's done properly but i mean there should be a setup and then there should be the stagger and it i mean looked like it worked really well okay everything like we're very back and forth but if we're a bit more accurate take our time a little bit we don't need to rush you're off court and you're discussing with kent like a bit of the strategy and the game is just starting yeah. and you're kind of just looking at the other team and seeing where they are strong yeah. and maybe how you can adjust or adapt the strategy to meet their gameplay yeah so how would you adapt your strategy to make sure that you're not just executing the same thing because the same strategy might not work on another team yeah so how do you determine what strategy to go with based on the team's strengths. Yeah, it's hard to know what strategy to go with because you need to know your team, right? You need to know your team's strengths and weaknesses. And to be a good call maker is you need to know the opponent's strengths and weaknesses in terms of player, in terms of skill level, in terms of synergy. And then that's when you go to strategize and make your calls. I decide the call by seeing who is on the other side, who is a priority target, who is their call maker and who is on fire. Establish who that is. And if you're lucky, multiple of those options is like one person. So it's higher priority, right? Yeah. So now you have to strategize on how to get that person out. Obviously they know they will be high priority. So they'll maybe play wing or play defensive. You strategize in the way that you do what's the most effective and strongest play for your team. See how that plays out. And then let's say if the opening rush doesn't work, then you change the opening rush. Slow playing doesn't work, then do counter rush plays. If you play offensively and it doesn't work, do defensive. So mm. it's a lot of picking and choosing what doesn't work and try to make it flow with your team to be able to always win every single set. So call making isn't as easy as just being left double on one because mm -hmm. you have to also think about who on your team has the balls. Are they on fire? Who's more accurate? You know, who's going to throw first? Who's going to throw second? Sometimes when we make a call like left double, I might say left double, you first. A lot of things to consider, yeah. but it's a lot to do with players on that side, players on this side, how many balls on each side and who you need to take out first. And if you can't take them out, then do something else. But as for defensively, if you keep dying a certain way, then you have to change something out. Maybe switching positions, maybe taking out the person that keeps taking you out, you mm -hmm. know, killing that person first or giving them more space so they can dodge more laterally. Who knows? You figure out yourself because I ain't your coach. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe in the future. I'd love to coach a team actually. I have uh, the passion and I know I can grow. And you I love- You definitely do. Yeah. I, love the, I love seeing progress. Yes. That's what I love seeing. So now I guess in this position here, I don't even know if we're winning or losing, but it's like, we're just assessing the situation because we walked in with a plan and now we've seen how they played. We can see, we've gathered some information, right? Mm. So we also have to account for our energy and fatigue management. And then you have to re-strategize around that. If you're winning, you're losing, the time left, you wanna strategize to have max value, right? So- um, Max value. Actual max value. <laughs> but um. I guess like for Kent and I, because we're both out, we died somehow right so we're learning from it and then we have to instead of just standing out and shagging now we stand out and see who's on fire who's the priority target to be able to do the call making for the next round yep. so if someone's on fire maybe we'll prioritize on getting them out on the rush you know but if they're if someone's playing really defensive then we'll go for someone else instead always think and breathe dodgeball mm. all the time right double right double nice It's not okay, Tal, nice work. Did you, did you say sorry because you weren't meant to throw? It was so okay, Tal, because I threw the fifth ball. I wasn't meant to throw the fifth ball, right? So it was, it was my opportunity shot, right? So, but I missed it and left K-Tal with one ball. So naturally what they would do is double rush K-Tal. Yep. So I risked K-Tal's life there, but he was able to survive. So I yeah. said, sorry. And I said, good work. Yeah. Uh, I think it's important to acknowledge that you definitely risked his mistake. life and yeah. you made a mistake. Exactly. If he died, it would have been my fault, 100%. Nice. Extreme yeah. ownership. Extreme ownership. And I knew I had the fifth baller too, but I still took that risk and it didn't pay off. I think if I took the risk and it did pay off, it would have been good. But I mean, the value, yeah, you know, it's just, I shouldn't have thrown. You're done. You're done. Let's go! <laughs> so, 
Yeah, I don't know. I think I might have celebrated too hard, but in those moments, I'm an old man, you know, I have a back pain, you know, <laughs> if I can get someone out and still survive... I'm going to be cheering. And you got out a priority player as I well. did get up. Daniel is massive. Daniel's a wing player. I got him out whilst he had two balls as well. Like, it's actually quite difficult. One thing I noticed as well is as you're doing the rush, right? There's no pressure on this side. So, you, you took a bit of time to even just plan yourself properly. So much time. And aim correctly. Yeah. yeah. So, this isn't even call making anymore. Like, this is talking about opening rush, right? So, what happens is I see Kevin drop the ball. Yeah. And I have like, what, an extra two more seconds or so. Mm. And I can choose my target so wisely. Exactly. And yes. he's got his back turned to me. The only other pressure I have is... Daniel. Yeah. So because if I don't throw it down, he's going to throw it at me. So I have to throw it him. I get him out. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so sweet. And the thing is, it is call making, but you're just call making in your head to yourself. Yeah, it's true. That's it's right. it's uh, my own decision making, isn't yeah. it? As and I think that's the thing that people will find interesting is the decision making yeah. of why you made a decision to yeah. get this person out versus this person. Yeah. Even if Daniel takes a shot, Tristan's got the uh, like the answer. He's got the last answer. So he's got my back. Yeah. Whereas on the other team, no one's got a ball except Daniel. So I yeah. have to go for Daniel. <laughs> Wings on one. Wings on one. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. Yes. Hey. So this is really good. Not only with call making. So I would look at the opponents and scan who has a ball, who is priority. So I would say Tristan opposite my, Tristan's got the advantage, right? So I'm going to take a risk and go wings on one. Mm. That's the call. So you can see as I make the call, uh, k -Tow's face is a bit confused because he has not heard the call. Wings on one. And look at his, his face. Right? Okay. He doesn't know. And then <laughs> Nyan passes the call over. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so really good in terms of teamwork. Yes, spreading um, the call. So we spread the call so everyone knows what they're doing. And then we execute the play and we get easy. I'm going to be able to pressure to save Tristan to come back. And I have enough confidence to take out my on a 1v1 if I had to. And you can see that I did take that shot to make us slow down. Okay. What's right. this? So Tristan, Tristan, Tristan. So you call Tristan. Yeah. So Tristan to throw one ball. Oh, to case how it gets mm. clipped. You make a call and then something goes wrong midway. Yes. Like what do you do? Do you keep going with the call or do you stop? No, you would, yeah. so this one case house out, we stop because there is one ball that's not being used. So you'd have to reset and gather the balls and make another call. When I'm asking for Tristan to throw, I'm expecting support on the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now that, that K-Tow's out, then my strategy and my call making has changed because yep. now I'm opposite Kevin. And so you have to re-strategize around that now as well. So now and then we do a four ball play, which is much safer than throwing- The one ball, potentially Kevin catching it. Yeah, yeah. And then it's exactly. like, now it's a 3v1. Yeah. And you can see, just have a quick play here. Kevin's positioning yeah. after okay. he throws. He's like ready. He's on his knees. He's like, he's, he's squaring up his body. So yeah, yeah he was definitely ready. Um, we just got to survive a bit better. Yeah. Like accuracy, it's fine. Survive a bit more, survive more than them, we got this. Aim small, miss small. <laughs> Big yeah. ladders, aim small, miss small. The half time, you have time to talk with your team, looking at like energy levels and yes. calls you have available to you to make sure that it accommodates everyone's energy, right? Yeah, that's right. Like if we had more time, then you'd go through everyone to see how everyone is feeling physically, mentally, mm. and all that type of stuff as well. We were leading at half time, so we're feeling good. So we just got to keep up with what we're doing. As a call maker, you just have to keep adapting because now you're winning, they're going to re-strategize to counter what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to always be on the ball of your feet in terms of your decision-making for strat calling. We can't keep doing the same thing because they, something's going to happen. So mm -hmm. in terms of what to change up is up to you to figure out on the day, in the middle of the game, which does require a lot of experience experience yeah it does yeah just <laughs> come come talk to me one day and we'll sit down we'll have a beer and uh we'll just talk dodgeball all day really <laughs> uh, but most a lot of the learning just comes in the game actually right? like yeah. sometimes you think that you can plan all this stuff ahead in advance and you can plan to some degree but most of it is in the moment decision in, making yeah and i think that's the tough thing yeah that takes time and experience to grasp yeah it is there's so many things that can take account of yeah and i could do a list and it'd be a lot <laughs> it'd be a big list it's so many things to account for how do energy levels being in the losing position or when time is running out affect call making it affects call making because now you're in a tighter position right you have less options you have to play more risky good point so when you play more risky what type of risks are you taking are you throwing the fifth ball are you doing like more double rushes it's kind of hard to know 
what call is the the right call. But I think from the years of us playing dodgeball, we've always just stuck to there is no wrong call, right? So you, you make the call and then you learn from the call. Uh, That's you know, so encouraging. Yeah, you can't say, yeah. oh, we should have done a left split instead of a left double. You know, yeah. who knows what you could have done. They could exactly. have caught it, you know, who knows? <laughs> exactly. So learn from it and then it's just about adapting, right? And when you're losing, eh, you just have to speed it up somehow. You have to change the pace. You have to own the pace of the game. They're stepping onto your court. You have to own the pace. If they own the pace and you're getting flustered and they're coming out on top, then by that point, you'll sort of know if it's unwinnable, then yeah, just have fun. Just play dodgeball. But obviously, if you're playing in competitively, there's always going to be that window where there's a chance to come back. And if you can't ha- come back, you can either just have fun now or you can play and still have the uh, pride and respect, right? It's like, I'm still going to play. I'm still going to go hard. I'm not going to give up. Let's see if I can finish this 1v whatever, if it comes down to that point. Oh. Jenny's out, Jenny's out. You and Jan. Cool. Four balls. So you call out the out, out. So Jenny didn't say that she was hit. So mm. you have to just quickly. Meet. And you want to make sure that the team members know yeah. that the person is out, right? Exactly. Because so they might look at the right wing and be like, oh, where'd they go? Yeah, exactly. Oh, where's my right support? Whoa! Woo-hoo! Nice block. <laughs> like, can you jump over my head? That is that. crazy. Is that my fault? Sunyan got out. Sunyan got out, but just before that, I was feeling a bit tired and we had three balls. And I, th- I gave the ball to Nyan. I was like, oh, you play. He's ba- basically, you can play with the balls out. In my mind, I'm like, I'll take a breather. Nyan can play. But then she got out. So I'm like, damn, was that my fault? Was she too tired? Yeah. So in my mind, if she was too tired, but I bounced at her, she would have just been like, oh, she gave me the ball. I'll just do it anyway. So I should have communicated with her if he's uh, want to throw, I suppose. Mm. Oh, like, do you have the energy to throw yeah, right now? Yeah. Basically. I'm like, oh, shit, was that my fault? I mean, she was like, nah. So, and, and that comes down to like leadership being like, who's tired? Who's Who's got the energy? And I remember another similar. Uh, connection i can do with this is um, my in my team she doesn't like hard balls so don't bounce her a hard ball because she, she won't be able to throw with it so now our whole team knows to not give her a hard ball or if we have two balls in our hands <laughs> give her the softer one that's so interesting yeah so it's just little in- bits of information that for people's personal preference yeah. even another example is shagging do you prefer it being bounced or passed behind your back or rolled to you small things like that will all add up eventually yep. the, the more knowledge the better right if you can support your teammates in any way yeah. communicate it and grow oh, so powerful yeah there you go so good so much value. So much value. Eyes! <laughs> Eyes! Oh, that was yeah. good. So I chose this clip because throughout the whole game, I cut out a few clips, but you said eyes a lot. Yes. So what does that mean? Eyes means eyes up. So uh, eyes open, eyes up, eyes where the balls are, or eyes where, you know, there's going to be some sort of attack from mm. them. Uh-huh. Do you think it has to do a lot with like complacency? Because if you weren't complacent, your eyes would always be in front. I mean, sometimes it's human error. You just forget, right? Yeah. Like you're going to pick up a ball, but- it, it can be a mix of complacency, tiredness, uh, how tired you are. Because when you're tired, you get a bit lazy and you're not focused as much as well, right? There's reminders throughout the game yeah. to eyes up as well. And I think it doesn't have to be the, the call maker who does. Anyone can call out yeah, these things. Definitely. Anyone can call out eyes or even what I've seen you do is call out how many balls there yep, are because that's, that's people right. might not be counting and yep. you're just focused on counting the balls. Yep. So that really helps. Just the more information that players have, the, the better yeah, chance of winning. Exactly right. Yeah. It's like um, it's playing any video game and just always constantly looking at the mini map. So that's yeah. information basically. And yeah. this is the information you have. And the mini map is the court and like your friends and your teammates are your cameras and your eyes. And so there's gonna be communication for max value. Nice Nyan, beautiful. Eyes, nice kid. Eyes, back, back it up. Beautiful Nyan, beautiful, beautiful. So I chose this clip because it's like you're off court and you're still participating in the game by encouraging and motivating your team. You're yeah. not just like sitting passively. Yeah. Uh, any tips on how to do that? Or like, Oh, man. I mean, I'm so <laughs> tired. I am gassed out. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just one of those things growing up playing in team sports, as tired as you are, you just have to support your team. You're dead, right? You technically have no more support on your team because you died. And how how bad are you to die at dodgeball and leave your teammates on the court to win the game for you, you know? So what you can you do on the side is support verbally and support by shagging. And I I believe that it helps a lot. The way you deliver your message uh, says a lot. The intent behind it as Mm. well. Because you genuinely are there to like push them and support them. Yeah, yeah, Um, that's right. And they might be in a position where like, oh my God, I'm struggling. I don't think I can win this, but like just a few words can just change the game. Exactly. And we are (coughs) part four. We're in the lead, 5-4. Guys, 
We're in the lead 5-4. Okay. So I, I chose this clip because, I mean, you're updating of the score, right? Yes. Something that we used to do was, even if we're winning, we're leading, we never get complacent. Mm -hmm. And we're like, we always used to say, we're losing. We're still losing or something. Yeah. Well, what, what do you think about like the way you tell you the score? Because you don't want them to get complacent, yes. but you want them to stay motivated, right? Yes. It depends on the team. Depends on the teammates. It also depends on the game. So in the semifinals, we have to be straight up. And like we needed to know that we need to maybe win one more set or if we win one more set, we play more time. In this case, complacency is out the window mm -hmm. because there's more at stake than your ego or complacency. Yep. I should have probably updated everyone on, on the time as well. But in my mind, I'm like, okay, five, four, 10 minutes left, maybe fit like two, possibly three sets in. But if we play one set and we play time, and then, you know, you can play around with that as well. So a lot of things is going in my head, but right now, updating the score, we could keep it up. And as for core makers, any mistakes, anything that happens that doesn't go our way, recalibrate, rethink, re-strategize. To this day, it's hard for me to even do that because there's just so many options and so many things you can change. But yes, keep playing dodgeball. We're gonna have to go for hard carries. We have to, I'm, I'm gassed. So try and find the right opportunity that you reckon? Don't even run up, no, no rushes. Yeah. Okay. I'm so gassed. <laughs> you can you can hear it. Catch! 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 Oh, it would have been so good, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. And uh, it would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Yeah. So, uh, so clearly, at that point, you're you're gassed out. You're puffed. So you're adjusting your strategy. Yeah. Against and, the team. and we're down players, right? So you don't want to keep gassing yourself out for the next round. So you have to, you know, fatigue manage yourself and running up and back when we have less players is not ideal. So have them do the running up and back, you having majority balls and then you do some counter rushes instead. But yeah, in this case, I think it was just so hard to see us winning that hard carries was the best option to do. Right, <laughs> left double rush. <laughs> <laughs> in my ears, I'm just like, oh fuck, he's gone. <laughs> Nice. Take it! Nice! Ooh. Yes. The very good decision making. So that is something we talked about before. And Tristan was so prone to it before where he'd have someone commit to a dodge right in front and he'd be such a juicy target that you want to go for it and be so blinded about someone else countering you instead. Yeah. So that is very top-notch dodgeball IQ, I would say. Well done. And Henry, I mean, you came up to support, but unlucky, like... Yeah. It was, you had the it, right... Like, you had the right idea. You yeah, had, definitely had the right idea. Soak, soak, soak. Survive. Yeah, so now like you're in the lead and the time management, like you have a few minutes left on the clock and they're going to be rushing to win yes. more points. So you're playing a bit more defensively. Yeah, you're playing more defensively. No need to rush. I mean, we're all pretty gassed. So now it's a little game of uh, endurance, right? Mm. There's no stress for us. We just have to survive. And in this case, they have four walls. We have two. Let's just soak, regain our energy yeah. and do more smarter plays. That seems like the ultimate strategy right then and there because you need to recover your energy yeah. and you need to play time. That's right. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So at the beginning of the game, your strategy will be something, right? Yeah. And then as the game progresses, you have to change up your strategy. And by the end of the game, depending on what the scoreline is and how much time you have left determines the rest of your uh, call making and and mm -hmm. what the play style and the speed of this game yeah. is going to be. Because you could be on the losing side right now and then your strategy is still, you need to rush. Yeah. You still need to play quick, but yeah. you could be gassed. So it's yeah. like managing all these things. And call making is actually so important and also just like morale as well, right? We've all seen it before and every like gaming or sports where it's like two teams versus each other, looks like one team's about to win and someone else is going to catch up somehow. And you ask yourself, how do they catch up, right? So it's, mm. it's to do with morale, to do with mindset, you know, and just shaking things off and re-strategizing and a lot to do with the call making and stuff so and to be a good coach leader captain and call maker is actually quite tough so yeah it is a big learning curve but i think the the key is communication isn't it yeah communication which comes to a lot of experience being on the court and knowing the consequences and yeah. just reviewing everything yeah. yeah you need to have the experience and you need to also be open about taking other people's advice as well so as a minis when we do a team talk it's not just me talking it's everyone inputting at the same time does anyone have anything to say you know and that way it's open communication all the time i could say i have a lot of experience i've played dodgeball longer you should listen to me 
no, like that's not the way to grow, isn't it? So mm. you need to have an open Always be mind. open. Yeah. And you need to be humble because everyone starts somewhere. And now it's your team that we're talking about. It's not only your friends, but I would say your team is also your family as well because you're close. You're, you're seeing each other every week. You know, it's a lot of time dedicated for each other. So mm. you need to not only play with each other, but it's like support and love each other, right? Mm-hmm. To be able to grow and be the best, I would say. Oh, nice. Nice. Back, 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 back. Because we had two balls, right? So yeah. I didn't want him to make the same mistake I did. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm very tired, so I wouldn't be able to survive like K-Tail. <laughs> yeah. But it's just knowing when to hold, pull someone back. Yeah. When they're in momentum. Yeah. Right? Because you just, in that moment, you just want to throw it. Yeah, I'm sure Tristan did. You could totally give it to him as well, you know? Maybe, let's say, for example, if we were up by a lot. Yeah. Sure, take the risk because if you get it, awesome. But if we're, we're trying to stay the lead and you want to play safe mm. and play time, then play it smart. You know, you don't yeah, want... it's definitely the smarter play yeah. to just... Do a double, throw two balls. No need to throw one because we know Andy is a catcher as well. So the experience isn't even just from playing, but experience is all from noticing people's habits and traits and skills and advantages and strengths and weaknesses. What Craig said in the uh, catching video. Yeah. Start picking up patterns mm. and from those patterns, you're able to assess what's going to happen coming at you. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I'm gassed. Shadow. Shadow. Yep. Just in case. For funsies. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay, was... Just in case, right? <clears throat> it's a little safety net. So. so shadow is when you stand behind them in case they throw and then you go for a catch. Oh yeah. We called that, that right? ghosting, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's either ghosting or shadow. I don't know. We call it yeah, whatever. If you want to learn more terminology, click the video right here and then uh, you learn more about the terminology. Yeah. So in this one, I got the boys to walk up to make the throw, but I know that Andy may pre-throw. So instead of being relaxed at the back, let's ghost or shadow at the back, just as a safety net. Yeah. You know? Just to, just in case. Now we're aware that we can potentially go for a catch. Yeah. Let's this, go! This is nice. um yeah. Now it's sudden it's death. Not over. Yeah. So at this point, yeah. we are in the lead by two points. So we have one, but yeah, as you can hear, our teammates say it's not over. So yeah. That's something we have embedded in our mind that it's not over. Don't get complacent. You know, we still want to play every, not only every set count, but every play counts. Because you don't want to disappoint your teammate on a particular play, but mm. not setting them up properly and stuff like that. That's right? so important. Like it's not about being a, having a successful game, but no. it's like have a successful play yeah. and then repeat that play successfully yeah. over and over it's to have a successful wins. game. It is definitely the yeah. small wins. Look, look about the plays that you did well and then progress onto that as well and look at the sets that you lost and how you died and learn from that it's like how did i die did i turn unnecessarily was i not focused was i not tracking you know was i lazy all that type of stuff to be able to figure out how to be a better dodgeball player if there was a brand new player don't know what calls to make they don't know just they're just starting out brand new with calls what advice would you give them to watch dodgeball dudes (laughs) try a lot of different calls don't stick to the same thing change it up so you're not predictable and slowly as you play know your team's strengths and weaknesses to develop your own playbook Mm -hmm. at the beginning use basic calls that we've provided but then afterwards make up your own calls work on top of them build on top of them yeah people have brought whiteboards with magnets on it people have bought you know just pen and paper and stuff and just think in your head different scenarios different ball placements different plays different styles that would cater for your team. If you can experiment and make plays for being on the offensive and defensive, yeah, really good. What you really want is to make chaos happen or make it look really chaotic, but you're under control the whole time. We've reacted to some Worlds games and we it looks like just, it's just chaos, yeah. but it's, it's probably like planned chaos. Yeah, exactly. You want planned chaos. So you want to confuse the other team, but on your side, you know exactly what's going on. Yeah. It's your play and they're playing in the palm of your hands. Yeah. That's what you want to do, right? So, but the thing is call making is hard and some not a lot of people like to call make and some people like to sit out and just focus on their gameplay. But I think to be a good dodgeball player, you need to know how to call make. Eventually, you're going to be down to one and one other person one and two other people they might not be as great call makers as you so you need to everyone needs to step up 
and experience call making so they're not afraid of it because mm. i remember the first time i was call making i'm like i don't know what i'm doing but now once you you get a bit better at it you start thinking more about it you're talking more about it and if you're passionate enough yeah and i think call making is important because it makes you more of an active player rather yeah. than a passive player passive yeah. is like you're just involved in your own skill but like active is you're considering the whole team when you're making a call that's right yeah. so it makes you a better more aware increase your dodgeball iq yeah and if you become a call maker then you can throw more we have provided two spanking videos with so much value for call making. Seven, Seven basic, basic strategies for dodgeball. Yep. And the other one is the terminology. Because in the terminology video, we do talk about other types of calls as well. And then you can weave that into your playbook. Um, yeah.